طيب بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمه الله تعالى وبركاته نحبكم جميعا في منبر مبادره الباحثين السودانيين في محيط اعتصام القياده العامه اليوم الحادي عشر من رمضان موافق 16 مايو 2019 ونبدا برامجنا بنادي مخاطبه اللغه الانجليزيه وحيبدا لنا الاستاذ محمد الاستاذ الوليد وليد وليد عثمان تفضل مشكورا السلام عليكم Uh, good evening, uh, everybody over here, and for the people who are watching us. Um, in the first place, uh, let's say that we are living uh, a deep grief, really, by losing the uh, great Maltese who suffered before providing their souls for this country. Uh, may Allah have mercy upon their souls and keep their family and keep our country safe. Uh, as we used to do every day so we're gonna start the, our English club today so discussing the the current situation in Sudan so what are your thoughts about the current situation that we live uh, and the ideas the, in the next the days that are coming and uh, even the laying of the announcement of the agreement between the transition and military a uh, council and the forces of change and freedom so would like to hear all of you over here and we'll be glad and grateful to speak and to share us here if you'd like to speak just raise up your hand show me your hand if you want to speak yeah anyone So, we are going to discuss the, the current situation in Sudan. So, what is going on these days? What do you think? So, just say, reveal your opinion, if you are ready. Yes, raise up your hand, show me your hand. Huh? The one? Yeah. Uh, gentleman over here. Yeah, welcome. Uh, good evening. Um, so, first of all, I would like to say that uh, the topic is very relevant to what's going on in Sudan here and especially in the military headquarters uh, since we came, came here on the 6th of April and uh, the problem uh, after Bashir was forced to step down the transitional military council has taken the power so the transitional military council is the government is here it's the government itself so uh, the role of the government is to save its citizen so you have to keep the citizen safe and uh, but what happened a day before yesterday was something tragic we didn't we didn't imagine that something like that will, will happen to us so and and also yesterday um a lot of protesters let's say peaceful protesters were injured those people who shot guns we, we we know them actually but we demanded a, a committee uh, let's say independent committee to make an investigation to discovering that uh, who was the responsi responsible of doing that and who was a beneficiary, somebody who is beneficiary from this. Uh, because at the time that negotiations are going on with the, uh, with the forces of uh, change and freedom, uh, something like this happened. So why? The question is why? Who is the beneficiary? So we need a very clear um, answers for this, uh, for this question. This is the first one. Uh, the second one is that I would like to say that if uh, transitional military council is thinking that um, um, our voices can be silent by these tactics, I think the result is wrong actually. This is something really um, wrong to think so. Because as Sudanese young people who came here, we have um, aspirations to see Sudan as a country that 
same like developed countries we have will of power to do that okay so we want to be like western countries we want to be like the country uh, of, of rwanda in rwanda what happened is that um problems much more than sudan itself here people killed each other genocide happened but after this genocide what happened people reconciled and peace happened and rwanda one of the country one of the best countries in africa right now so we want to be like like rwanda and even better than them as sudanese people we are diverse diversity so this diversity shouldn't be um uh, let's say a sense of weakness it should be a sense of strength so um our demands right now um transitional military council please keep negotiations with um forces of freedom and change this negotiation should continue because see, there is only uh, last point and that last point is the council of so uh, sovereignty the council of sovereignty there should be representation a total a total civilian um, let's say a council of uh, so uh, sovereignty with the representation of what of military so this is what we're asking for because when transitional military council came and take the power they said that it is not uh, let's say military coup they said okay they came for the sake of helping sudanese protesters they came to fulfill the, the, uh, the demands of our demands so why the question is why why are you still going around in, in this va vacuum cycle so um it is really very clear demands we need a very clear answers and our our demands are uh, peace justice and freedom and no government can do that can implement that only the civilian government can do that so a very quick um solution for this problem handling the power to civilian government this is the first one and civilian government can implement peace justice and freedom regarding peace because sudan is uh, suffered a lot from uh, wars in darfur blue nile and uh, even in in uh, let's say in, in western sudan and different part of sudan we need peace how long sudanese people are gonna suffer from war and the consequences of war we need this war to settle and there should be peace between people this is the first one regarding freedom as i said that sudan is a very diverse country Re regarding the citizens and people who live different communities different colors and this uh, diversity should respect it no a group of ethnicity should be above the others we are all equal there should be freedom uh, and also uh, when when i come to talk about freedom um uh, let me say that there should be freedom of uh, press freedom of expressing your opinions freedom of thoughts different type of freedoms and the last point that i would like to uh, uh, talk about is um justice we need justice to be implemented in sudan and that can be carried out by civilian government everybody who commits crime against sudanese pe people should should held accountable accountability should be on everybody everybody who commits crime and as i mentioned before previously in, in the last um participation i said that um this justice should not on should should not be implemented on others and forget about other people if a poor person did something wrong justice should be uh, implemented on him on or on her at the same time the rich so as sudan be like you know there should be equality so different points different problems and um, we need to be stay here as young people as protesters peaceful pro protest we should stay here in order to solve the problem of sudan so our our only weapon that we have is what is protest using our voices and there should be international media coverage 
uh, as we see that, uh, okay, after um, Bashir stepped down, uh, there, there is a sense of uh, some kind of freedom here. We're we calling international media to come here, to cover and, and, and to discover um, the truth, what's going on in Sudan, okay? And also local media should cover, should cover this. And instead of just, um, okay, I'm using the people, uh, songs and, uh, you know, playing as if we are in paradise. This is something wrong. Where is Sudanese uh, national TV? Talking about, you know, uh, one of the one of the Sudanese media channels is what, uh, uh, Blue, Blue or uh, Nina Lase. They're, they're talking about Agani or Agani. So what's wrong with you? This is a time that you have to spend time covering about uh, protest, what's going on, the problem of uh, Sudan, the real problems. We are not like uh, happy birds right now. We are suffering. Uh, so we're, we're gonna come. We're gonna come back to okay. the, the uh, to this main point of the uh, profession uh, of social media or media as uh, in general. But let me ask you. You see some questions. So you said for, for in the beginning that this transitional military council is the same government. You mean that this is the extension of the previous government? Okay. How can we cut this extension? Okay, uh, to overcome uh, the previous uh, government. How can we do that? Really, this is a very good question. Thank you. Um, we as we came we came here in the on the 6th of april and bashir stepped down on 11th or let's say uh, remind me in, in 11th of uh, of april we have more than a month and six days exactly and till today they said that bashir is in cover prison we haven't seen him no picture no video and we suspect that this could be a fake, a fake military coup. Okay, we, we are not sure. But what we have to do to make sure that uh, they are really what they are saying, what they are saying, we have to use the media itself. One of the military leaders he said that uh, Bashir's brother um, called Kulhu, uh, Abdullah and uh, and Abbas. They said, okay, they're in, in uh, Cobra prison. But suddenly we discovered that Abbas in Turkey. So wh what's wrong with you? Y you have to say something that you are sure, okay? So different problems that we have, we, we are not, let's say, we don't trust in a transitional military council till now because there is no evidence, only sayings, but real practical implementation of what they say, um, there, is no, um, there is no evidence. And also we need um, media, media as a tool, we have to use it, okay? There should be pressure on transitional military council from different sides, from local sides and from international and from regional. So African Union, they said that, okay, we have given you 16 days or 15 days, you have to handle the power to civilians. But suddenly, Egyptian leader, who is a very evil one, we don't, we don't respect them actually. We don't respect this person. He gives them two months. Okay, one month is consumed right now. We have only one month. Wallahi, there is no way. Okay. 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 Uh, another, question, another question before you go. So you have said that the um, Sudan is the uh, country of diversity. So we, we know that all of us know that the Sudan is the place or the country of diversity and the diversity is the place of creativity and you've mentioned the an example of uh, Rwanda right yep. so how can we implement the the experiment of uh, Rwanda here in Sudan to be uh, at the first uh, country in Africa how can we implement it okay. Oh, okay it's a really big question but I have to I try to answer this question um, Sudan as Rwanda suffered a lot from a lot of problems and uh, Darfur is uh, a very living example what happened in Darfur was tragic chaos and even some, some something that's unspeakable um, total villages had been burned down people are, were, were being killed and we know who did that 
and even international criminal court accused Bashir directly himself. The one who did that international, okay, Bashir himself. But after that, Bashir is in copper prison, if we assume that, okay? This is the first one. Um, how can we be like Rwanda? Uh, first of all, um, I would like to send a very clear message to Hemeti himself. Um, Hemeti, you have done a great job regarding, um, regarding Bashir and his system, okay? Um, you um, helped to keep Bashir in the prison. This is the first one. We thank you for that. This is the first one. The second thing is that, Hemeti, you yourself, you had problems in Darfur. You killed people in Darfur. There should be accountability on you. And at the same time, the rebels themselves, they commit crimes. But we will be thankful if you call all, to the, let's say, um, Darfurian uh, uh, revolutionaries, like Abdul Wahid, like others, to call them. Yani, alalagal, yani, to indak nawaya hasuna. Nazim, you kufi nawaya hasuna, tanadi nazal, you have to call for them. Okay. Good intentions, uh, thank you very much. Good intentions. Call Abdul Wahid, call um, Khalil, um, uh, Jibril, and others. Say, okay, what happened was what happened. But right now, we have to sit down. We are not. We are. We are no longer going to suffer from the same problems that happen in Darfur. We are going to solve the problems of Darfur. Sit down. Darfur is very rich. We are diversity. We have to solve problem together. Nobody should be excluded. We have to be included. By such a reconciliation, I think we can be like Rwanda and better. Thank you. Thank yeah. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Abdulmanem. Thank you so much. Uh, he had uh, really a good uh, representation and uh, a clear point, uh, clear points for uh, what is going on on Sudan and how can Sudan uh, overcome the problems that are going, that are happening now and since ever. So he said that uh, the transitional uh, military council should call all the um, armed movement to sit down to discuss to negotiate and then we're gonna overcome the the problems that were just making sudan just uh, stick in the same point uh, so for the newcomers so we are talking about the current situation in sudan what is going on in sudan and what's your opinion for the uh, future of sudan uh, if you'd like to speak just uh, show me yourself if you'd like to speak yeah yeah, come over here. Welcome. What's your name? Wahbi. Wahbi. Mr. Wahbi, please give him a clap, please. So, here you are. Okay, very good evening, everybody. I'm absolutely happy to be at the timeless uh, place of, let me say, uh, military headquarters. Uh, first of all, my condolences to our mothers, to our honorable mothers who lost their lives for the justice, freedom, and peace. As our slogan of our honorable revolution, justice, peace, freedom, and the civilian authority is the choice of people. And I do thank uh, the force and change, and I mean the, the change and freedom force for being there for us every step of the way. Uh, and I do thank uh, Sudanese Professional Association at the head of them for, for leading the revolution up to this point. Uh, what is going on in Sudan is a very critical moment, let me say. The tension is everywhere. The tension is, let me say, is in every heart of the Sudanese people. Uh, as we have witnessed days ago, there was a tragic action that happened, and everyone was, let me say, sad about what, what happened. Uh, but 
that is not the end of our journey, let me say. The journey is still not yet finished. We are about to see the light at the end of the tunnel, yes. Okay. Even though uh, they are 25 hours away of seeing the light at the end of the tunnel, maybe, and I hope that, uh, no way out, right? But we should be patient and control our emotions and whatever until to see what's gonna happen in the next few hours, right? So, and the other thing is that as we are passing through this very critical moment of tension, let me say, uh, peaceful slogans should be there everywhere. We must tell all the revolutionists around that we should have peaceful slogans, right? We are not going all the time to be enemies of our, uh, let me say, military forces around us, as it has been said all over again and again. As it is a very critical moment, uh, all Sudan we must be peaceful all the time, right? And thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, just let me ask you a question. So, yeah, to overcome the the conflict, that is, uh, it could be it could be happened. Um, do you, uh, what do you think that about the who killed the people? Okay, and who is gonna just benefit from killing or from making a, a conflict between the revolutionaries and the military, uh, the transitional military council? Who is gonna benefit from that? Okay, no doubt that the remaining, the remaining, uh, let me say, the remaining regime is is doing that, no doubt, right? And their purpose is very clear to everyone, is to make, you know, problems among the revolutionaries so as not to achieve their goals, so as not to achieve what they are seeking for, right? And as the last news that is spread around here is that there are some people within the, the I mean, the Quick forces, I mean, uh, the Quick support forces. Yeah, the rapid support forces. One of the generals who was the previous, I mean, uh, security, upper, I mean, security person, who has been joined by them, and who did, who did that, no doubt. But the message is very clear. Okay, for for everyone here, that they want to make different problems so as not to achieve our goals for our grateful, honorable revolution. And let me say, yes, stop killing. This is not the moment for doing that. It is over. The game is over, right? They must keep their places and they must handle out our civilian authority. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, he, he, uh, he has given you a, a piece of uh, advice. He said that you must be peaceful. So, and this is the only way. So peace uh, is the uh, only way for winning the revolution. So for the newcomers who just uh, have joined us, uh, we are talking about the current situation in Sudan. What is going on uh, and what is going to happen in the coming days. So if you'd like to speak, let's uh, show me yourself. Uh, you want to speak? Yeah. Yes. Thank you. So what's your name in the beginning? Muhammad Abdi Karim. Please give him a clap. Thank you so much. First of all, I, I greet and salute all the people there around here. And I'm going to greet and salute to the families of the martyrs and high condolences to the families of the martyrs. I want to say that uh, at the first time when we are came here in this place, 
and the 6th of April. The, the rest of the military government, the previous government, tried to try to uh, try to to make conflict between the, the revolutionaries and they tried to throw to us tear gas and a lot of things, a lot of things they tried to chat people here from this place but we are revolutionary we are this place this is our place we have uh, around here in this uh, place we are our our uh, our roadblocks roadblocks there is no one going to to uh, take or remove our roadblocks in order to control this place there are also some people they come from the outside some militia to come outside when are the first time when we come here these people as this militia they came before the rest of the militia the rest of the government are being down the previous previous president al bashir is try to to uh, this, to take these militias in order to killing the revolutionary here in this place. But we don't like these militias who call their the uh, the cars the cars the, the cars around here all this this area and all the. This, all the the capital of Sudan. This this militia, they are not illegal to come here in this place. This, their presence is outside at the borders. Okay, uh, I appreciate your opinion, but don't you think that they saved the revolution? They saved the sit in here on the uh, uh, military headquarters. They saved you, okay? Uh, they saved the revolutionists from not being killed from the uh, the, 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 the ex regime. So, so they help us. They help us. The the rapid support forces. They help us, and even they save the revolution till this moment. So, what do you think? But I want to say that uh, these people they are not uh, saving us. But but I want to say that uh, this is they are militia. They are not illegals to come there here. They are not illegal to come here. But I want to say what has happened after 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 two days or 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 uh, three days. There there is some uh, in the in the nail uh, in the uh, in the nail street. There are a lot of revolutionary. Some of the rest uh, rest of the militia, rest of the uh, government, rest of the some people of the rest government. They are came here try to make new road blocks out there in the in the in the night street at the revolutionary there the the rest of the security security intelligence they came there in that area and the, the electricity cut down and they try to kill a lot of revolutionary there out there. Right now we don't know who they killed the the people there out there we want to know who killed those people we leave the re, uh, responsibility to the transitional military council and we need to trial prosecuted those people who killed the revolutionary since since we are the uh, since the revolutionary began at the December, also we need to arrest all those whom killing, killing and killing those people, killing the revolutionary in the uh, in the a lot of places here.
in the in the capital and the outside of the uh, of the of the capital. They are also these people. They make a lot of they make a lot of genocide in Darfur, in Blue Nile, and they make mass shooting, and they make a lot of uh, genocide and killing and burning a lot of houses. And we need to trial these people. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. We're going to trial them. But uh, in the current situation, so uh, we're not gonna, uh, we are no longer yet talking about the past. So the, sp the past, we know the past, and we don't deny that. But we, we live in, let's say, critical uh, moments, so we need to overcome. So we don't need to look at the past now. We should look forward, okay, to overcome this situation. So. As I said before, they helped us, they saved us, they protected us. So, and we appreciate their effort. So, you should ask yourself, who's gonna win if there will be a conflict between you as a, a revolutionary and the military council, uh, the military transition and military council, who's gonna benefit? So if you ask yourself this question, you're gonna know who will benefit, okay? So let us just say, let it peaceful, don't uh, negotiate even in the past now, because we want to overcome this situation. Then after that, we're gonna come back to trial all people who did genocide in Darfur and everywhere. So once again, we are talking about the what is going on in Sudan now. Uh, what is your opinion uh, for the next days? If you'd like to speak, show me yourself. I think Mr. Fox over here is uh, having something to say. Welcome. Give him a clap, please. Thank you. Uh, there is a very important point that we have to speak about, which is the point of away from the military forces, away from Arab Bashir, from Kazan, from anything. Uh, I was talking for a while with my friend here about the important point that the things that we, we earn back, like being in one line together. I thought that we forgot this. In the past, Kazan taught us to be away to be separated, not to be united. Because as you know, united we stand and individual we fall. So they separated us, that's why we fell down. So I'm so happy that when I see all Sudanese people are together in one line. Yesterday we were in the barriers, Madaris, we were making barriers. Ladies, girls, children, and everyone were, were one hand. So this is the type of things that we, we gain from the revolution. Revolution is not just about the military forces. It is not about this stuff, it's about the emotional feelings that we got back. So I'm so happy seeing Sudanese people together. So, and the, and the important question that I'm asking you right now, after everything and the revolution is finished and the new government is made, we have a very important part that we have to do. We should not expect this country to be excellent from one year. I'm asking you, what should we do to make this country rise up? Because if after the revolution, we got back to where we, where we were, so we will get to the same point that we are separated and nothing is going to be changed and nothing will happen at all. So what do you think? From our side, what should we do to rise this country? So Wahabi, I, I have taken my chance, but yeah. I wanna. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you can reveal your opinion, Mr. Wahabi, right? Abdul Munam. Abdul Munam. Okay, thank you. Welcome. Uh, I have already taken my chance, but uh, uh, really, I'm sorry for that. Um, um, the question was uh, really I forgot the question. What should um, we do? We are as citizens. Yes. Not as government, not as After we were in the uh, well, very good question actually. Um, when we come to talk about uh, re um, repairing the damage that has been done by Bashir regime for three decades, 30 years, the damage is very intense. 
um, we have a lot of issues in Sudan uh, regarding the issues of uh, refugee, refugees, people, Sudanese people outside the country, people, um, the foreign people in Chad and Central African country. We have people in Eritrea. Sudanese people are in Eritrea. We have Sudanese, uh, let's say, um, professionals outside the country, in America, in Europe, and in different countries. So the question is, how can we solve these problems? Um, the damage that I want to talk about is, we have the issue of tribalism in Sudan. How can we solve this problem? And this problem had been brought by Bashir himself, because he was racist. Whether we like it or we don't like to say that, he was racist. Uh, but as young people, um, we are uh, same. We don't have that racism in our minds. The old classical thinking of uh, Sudanese people are different and looking at this black and this is red. This is not a good idea. We are all same, whether you are Arab or African. We are the same people. And we have to get out um, a lot of... Um, for example, if you want to go to, um, to make some uh, documents in Sudanese institutions, they sometimes ask you questions like, what is your tribe? We, ha we, we want to remove this. We want to remove this. And nobody will ask a Sudanese person, what's your tribe? I'm Sudanese, that's enough. And they should be practice, a practice of reconciliation, a practice of accepting one another. If you are in, from South Sudan or Northern Sudan, Western Sudan, no matter who you are, you are Sudanese person. This is the first one. And uh, the second point that the issues of development, how can we help Sudan develop and become a country that's well developed like Japan? We dream and we have to dream actually until our dream should be fulfilled. Um, issues of infrastructure, they shouldn't be like uh, centralization of uh, a capital. They should be development in everywhere and we can learn from history actually same problem that we are suffering right now countries before us suffered like the country of the united states the united states is a very big country more than 51 states they had a problem of uh, developing let's say there is development in some areas and there is no development in some areas and people migrate and move from the villages come to the developed places so they studied because um, uh, people whom we call them Khawajat, every phenomena, every problem that they have, they make a study. And I, I'm really glad that uh, Dr. Anor and, and others, they came with initiatives, Sudanese Researchers uh, Foundation. Every problem that we have in Sudan, they should be a, res a research. A, a research, what is the problem? And uh, what are the tools that we are going to use? in order to come out with the result. And the result that we come out with, we have to implement it in the real life. Yes, of course. But by doing so, we can develop Sudan for better and better and better. Okay? And I do believe in Sudanese people. I do believe in their capacity to do that. Okay? Thank you so much, Mr. Abdelmanim. Uh, Thank you so much. Uh, I'd li I really like your, your, your thoughts and your opinion. And I think uh, Mr. Fox over here, he summarized the, uh, all the speech. He said that united, we stand, separated, we fall. So that's it. So when we are united all together, so we're going to do anything. So when we are separated, we are not uh, going to do anything, right? So the chances are here. The chances are here for your opinion, your speech, uh, what is going opinion. on in Sudan, and opinion. what we're gonna do for the yeah, coming opinion. days? Yeah. yeah, you have a question for Mr. Fox? Okay, great, great. Uh, as we have heard that some people are saying that the various have been put and removed. They say that they were put by the NCP persons, let me say. Right? 
Um, at the same time, the people who provoked our forces, military forces, they said that also those are the ones who did that too. Yes. I want to be sure that if they are or not, is that true or not? For the sake of integrity, I don't know. For the sake of integrity, I don't want to lie because I'm holding this mic. But the thing to my way of thinking, I thought that putting the barriers extended, is a good... Extended. Yes, um, to my way of thinking, I thought that extending the barriers and put it far away from, the, from here is a good thing. Why? Because when you put a barrier, the transportation is not going to be able to move. So this leads to civil disobedience. Because if we need to make civil disobedience, optional civil disobedience, it will never happen. So we force people to have civil disobedience. This is my point of view that uh, barriers are good. But people who provoke the revolutionaries and people who kill the, the people, I don't know them. Seriously, I don't know them. And I asked this question yesterday. To me, yesterday uh, I was in the barriers. And to my mind, I saw the military forces shooting and killing people, but I'm not quite sure whether they are or not. And uh, yeah, they say, I, I have a, a, an opposite I mean, opinion for your opinion. So for me here, uh, I think that the extension of building the barriers far away from here, uh, this is not a good idea. Why? Because we're going to be weak. Okay? So we're going to be separated. So we'll be just uh, easily taken. So, you know that the, there are people wa uh, wanting to uh, shoot us, right? So, they're going to find the chance, okay, to, to shoot you. So, and even they are making conspiracy uh, to make a conflict between you and the rapid support forces and the, even the, the military. So, this is my point of view, and even I um, respect your point of view. <laughs> so... Uh, for the newcomers, uh, again and again, Mr. Gedura over there, Mr. Gedura, yeah, just uh, assure us your opinion for a moment, yeah, for a moment, it's not something hard, yeah, come over here, it's not something hard, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can, you can do it. Assalamu alaikum everybody, so I have intensive flu, that's why I'm not able to speak, but when it comes to speaking about my country, I have to sacrifice and I have to do my best in order to deliver the clear message right here. So, <clears throat> as Sudanese people, this is the best time in order to unite. Uh, this is the best time in order to be with each other. So, as Mr. Rosman said, that united, if we are united always, we will win. So, coming days are going to be difficult so I'm not pessimistic but I'm telling you the truth that coming days will tell us who is going to benefit this country and who is going to destroy it. so my advice to everyone here that in coming days or in coming period if, uh, for this country is to help each other uh, to be with each other uh, in order to, to to be strong. So uh, excuse me again because I have to not able to speak but next time. Okay. Thank you so much Mr. Kaduro. Um, and may God have the help upon you. So uh, uh, another chance for Mr. Yeah? Yes. Mr. Yusuf, please give him a clap. Uh, hello everyone here. I have just uh, mean got questions. Uh, my question is, uh, why the military council is dominating, I mean, the, the authority in uh, uh, Kenya? Why the military council is dominating, I mean, the authority in Kenya? <laughs> okay, it's a good question. But this is not my opinion, but I'm going to um, uh, reveal what uh, people think. So people think that this is the extension of the ex-regime. The same government, okay? The NCP. So that's it. So, uh, Mr. Cox, over here. Yeah. So let me humbly uh, reply uh, to your question. In this period, 
when the ex regime was fallen so the military should uh, govern this country it's not optional so until now what is going is true this is what is, should be happening Good. So, uh, guys, we need you to practice and we need you to speak. We need to hear your voice. Please, when you think, think loudly. So, now I'm asking you, what exactly do you need from the upcoming government? What do you want from me? If I am representing the new government, what do you want from me? What do you want me to do? Sudan is uh, is multi ethnic, multi cultures, multi language, and Sudan has a lot of uh, resources. Like we have the the long river in the world, and we have a lot of a lot of resources, and we're gonna be like the other countries. And we all these things we are going to be uh, like uh, like developing countries, and we need to, to be in one hand to build the new country to go further, unlike the developing country. Thank you so much. Thank you so much uh, for the uh, newcomers over here, uh, Mr. Fox over here. We build the question. He said that. If he is a government, what are you going to ask him? What are you going to request from him? What do you need from the a new government? What do you need? Huh? Okay. A lot of money. Okay. The now money speaks. Okay. Give him a clap, please, Mr. Mr. Walid, like, like me. Okay. I want a lot of money, a lot of jobs, a lot of work for everyone is in Sudan. Uh, how can we just uh, gain that money? How can we? We have a lot of sources for money. We have a gold, we have oil, we have any anything in Sudan. Sources for uh, wheels. You know? You know me? You know? You, you know what? What I think? Just, just, just keep, keep, keep saying. I don't, <laughs> I don't speak clearly. <laughs> yes, yes. I'm coming to you, just let me reply to you. So, uh, Mr. Will